morning. Just trying to get myself in some decent light here. Good day for a bike ride. You see I'm just on this little public bridle way just off the guided, guided busway. Just come from St Ives. Currently near Over. Just past Swavesy. I've seen a little spring lambs there. Doing a bit of uh, bike packing testing again. I'm working my way up to doing uh, some proper overnight excursions again. I'm just trying to play around with different setups on this bike. Putting the camera in this pouch here when I'm riding, tucking it into this hat. I've got my tail bag <clears throat> with an added pouch on it. Fuel bottle, water bottle, cycling around and uh, see what we can find. Tricky the cycling and filming lark. Um, so I just went on a bit of an urban exploration there through um, uh, North Stowe. There's a guy on the bus. Say hello. Hi. Through North Stowe and Long Stanton Park and Ride. Um, and now I'm back on the guided busway path. Lovely sunny day, a little bit of a breeze. Just turned off the guided busway again. This nice little gravel track. Um, I think we're heading over towards Cotton Arm, up that way. Though I have walked down this way, looks familiar. Yeah, on the... Yeah, I believe it was on the Two Rivers Walk, where I kind of abandoned it and cut, cut across the countryside. I came along this, over this little bridge here, looking a little bit more gravelly track. I think we'll go that way. Yeah. in a circle. <laughs> um, that track I pointed out going, oh that's a bit wibbly wobbly, this is the one I'm coming down back towards the guided busway again. Up towards Rampton but then cut off down a little uh, footpath which then led me to this path. that one-handed that would have been over the handlebars
bird spotting. sheltered space for a moment. I'll give you a look at the bike. This is my uh, old Scott mountain bike. It's about 24 years old originally. Got it in uh, Chichester when I lived down there in 2000. It's had a few changes over the years. Got rid of the suspension forks, put a rigid fork on there from uh, Planet X bikes. Still got the original wheels. Change the handlebars. Let's turn this light. Just scaring the birds away. The handlebars are DMR downhill mount um, handlebars, I think. It's a bit windy, isn't it? Uh, I've got BMX stem on there. Uh, it's single speed now. Go on this side. This off as well, and that one off. Not that that was doing much. Oof. So I've got like a single speed chain ring and a cog at the back. The chain could do with maybe losing a, a link, it's a little bit loose. What else? Tyres Schwab Marathon Plus. Never had a puncture with them. So what have I added packing packing wise, bag wise? I showed them a little bit earlier. These um alp kit, a lot of bottle bags, but you can mount them to your handlebars and then they they just strap around the fork as well so they stay pretty rigid. They're not going anywhere. They were I found them on eBay. Don't think I paid much for them. And this Alp kit pouch I got in the Alp kit shop in Keswick a couple of years ago. Not on our recent trip, this was the previous trip. That did cost a fair bit, even for a small bag, but I like the look of it. It's nice. Does the job. Uh, and water bottle's a water bottle. This is an old water bottle that I'm using to put meths in for my stove. And the Caradis tail bag. I found that in a charity shop for a lot less than it would have cost me new. It's one of the Cara Dry, so it's completely waterproof, I like the sort of Ortlieb pack type material. Nice thick PVC. It's got the two side pouches either side. Big, big main compartment with a couple of pockets inside as well. Fits on the seat post stem and then locks locks on there and then I've just got my recently acquired Fjall Raven pouch haphazardly strapped on. I need to change how I'm doing that. It's staying on but it's a bit it's a bit Heath Robinson. Crush crossing across Cambridgeshire. So 
Histon is down that way. Sorry. Cambridge down that way. Back to St Ives that way. Ten miles back in a straight line. It's not even 12 o'clock yet. Plenty of time for a bit more bimbling about. Time for lunch. I'm gonna have mug shop, pasta cajun, and a coffee. So I've got a small cup for the coffee, big cup for the pasta. I've got my honey stove, a bushcraft store pot, and the owl kit wind windbreak, which I believe I'm gonna need, and some water and spare water and spare fuel. trying something different with the honey stove just using the smallest um, combination with just the four side pieces just about fit the trangier in there slots in seems okay this hat was another it's because I said it wasn't windy this hat was another um, find in the Lake District charity shop, five pounds. Cheers. Schoolboy error on my part. The um, mug shop is like nearly a year out of date. I thought it would be all right. I mean, I didn't check it before I left. I just opened it just now. I thought, oh, 2023, oops. It might be okay, but it's a congealed lump, uh, so I didn't want to risk it. Um, but I've got coffee, nice and hot, and I've still got cereal bar, crisps, and a banana. So I think I'll be all right. I don't think I'll starve. Um, bike's doing good. Still in one piece. One thing I'm definitely going to change is the way I've secured this. I mean, it stayed on, but these these Velcro straps, the way I've got them, they just keep peeling off a little bit. It's not going to fall off, it just keeps moving around a little bit. Whereas at the bottom, I've got a couple of these clips on, so I might just get a couple more of them to attach here to here. It's getting a good test. Nice bit of mud on it because this whole really this whole bag acts like a mud guard anyway. Otherwise everything's all good. Should have actually made my coffee in the big mug really, shouldn't I? Oh, excuse me. Finish my lunch in the lovely sunshine. I'm gonna get back to you in a moment.
And we can put all this stuff back in here. This craft store pouch that I got with this pot. We put the wind. Wind deflector in there. And the cups. And the little pouch with the lighting bits and bobs in. Slip the spork in. So I'm going to keep this level and put it in my one of my other pouches. And then but there is room in there for it. The honey stove is all back in its pouch. And this is going to go. So that's, that's level in there. Level 42. And then I'll just put me charge on top of there. That's all my snacks gone. losing the light. Oh look. Look how much forehead there is. <laughs> so while we're talking about hats, my last bike ride a couple of days ago, which was around this area as well, I found a hat in a hedge, as you do. And um, this is said hat. It, um, it had a lot of holes in it, which I've since repaired with some of the wool blanket from a uh, old old blue wool blanket that I've been using to make a, a hoodie. And a couple of patches there, and then the rest of the little holes are sewed up with some thread. Just as it starts raining, unbelievable. <laughs> I knew it would. I was hoping to get home before that, but anyway, there you go. A found hat cost me nothing. Now, if you look up. Kashmir hats by Johnston's of Scotland. We'll find out how much these are brand new and why I was happy to find it in a hedge and repair it. It's uh, nice and soft. Um, it's not going to protect me from the rain though, so I think I might have to get my raincoat out and uh, head off. And hopefully the next time you see me in a video on a bike, on this bike, it will be for a proper overnighter. I'm going to pack this with some camping gear, most of what I need in there, maybe one more thing strapped on top and uh, we shall go on a proper adventure and an overnighter. So till next time, hoping for better weather, cheers. Thanks for watching and uh, keep, your, keep your eyes peeled for hats in hedges, you never know what you're going to find. Bye for now. Going old school with the Kodak action camera. So you can get a bit of footage of my bike and me getting a little bit wet. <laughs>
it's handy. So let's head back to St Ives I think.